Can you speak on those politics in the industry, especially in the entertainment industry, where you get found to be the bad person just for standing up for yourself? It's going to happen every time. And right? what do you do in those <laughs> kinds of situations? Because there's a lot of people that's about to stand up for themselves and find themselves in the corner fighting for their life. Yeah. So what do you do when that happens in your life? You stand in that corner, you fight for your life. Mm. And, you, and, and the you. thing that, and the thing, and, and I mean, that's just it. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat the shit. Yeah. Because going up against major corporations with millions, billions and billions of dollars, influence. I mean, the head of Think Factory's wife was the head of one of the biggest publishing companies. I'm sorry, not publishing companies. One of the biggest PR companies, you know, ever. My God. I'm competing with a lot. And I'm not, again, I don't want anybody to take from this conversation that I have any venom towards that situation. Yeah. I actually am very grateful that that situation occurred because that was the most mm -hmm. educating, one of the most educating moments of my life. That's right. I owe them people probably, at this point, I probably do owe them a check <laughs> for the education that I received yeah. about the importance of, to answer your question, not really giving a shit what somebody's thinking about when you know that you're coming from the right place mm. and you're trying to do something to positively impact more than just yourself. That's right, that's right. How does it go in those meetings when you start to speak of licensing versus selling? Well, when I met with Lionsgate mm -hmm. and I pitched them what was the spinoff of Soul Kittens Cabaret, mm -hmm. which was entitled Curtains, mm -hmm. because it was a show that let you pull back the curtains on this club and what mm -hmm. was going on in it. And the lawyer who um, I was working with at the time when we went in and pitched it to him, I said, hey, listen, you know, I am working with the team of people who worked very closely with Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I know Tyler Perry has a relationship at Lionsgate and Lionsgate understands the concept of owning something and licensing it to them for them to distribute so that you become a equitable partner That's right. and not a work for hire, mm -hmm. which so many of us in this industry have been conditioned to believe is all that we're entitled to. Mm. So when I went in and met with the head of Lionsgate mm -hmm. at the introduction of the attorney who knew him well and said this is something they would embrace and mm -hmm. left him my script for Soul Kittens Cabaret, left him my script for Curtains, which is the spinoff, left mm -hmm. him copies of the DVD that we had recorded, mm -hmm. you know, really had a great meeting and hurt. And he even said, I'm going to read it over the weekend. And I love the name Tata Burlesque. I didn't hear back from them. So I assumed the concept of me coming in, pitching an ownership licensing partnership scenario didn't work because I know the script is good. I know the story is good. I know that there's a great opportunity here for us to develop this into something amazing. Mm -hmm. and I hadn't heard back from them. And then later I discovered that there was P Valley, mm. which is substantially similar mm -hmm. beginning, middle and end to the story I pitched. I don't know why they chose this alleged story that Katori Hall made into a play mm -hmm. about strippers versus my more flushed out. I have more marquee talent. Fantasia was in my show. Faith mm -hmm. was in my show. Tati. I had so much talent to draw from. Mm -hmm. That play had been shown in various cities. There was so much development. And it's the story of a transgender club owner. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, a gender fluid club owner. Mm -hmm. These women, their stories, their individual struggles, mm -hmm. the fact that the club is on valuable land going up for Vegas, you know, the, 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 the boyfriend from the past who comes in, the new girl who comes in with the red suitcase. There's so many substantial similarities in this space. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you look in your deck of pitches, for lack of a better word, or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you have to say, hey, we were pitched something similar to this or this is more, you know, I don't know why they didn't choose my story from mm. me yeah I have no idea the, the, I would like to think that we'll be able to figure that out when we get in front of a judge and a jury and that is part of the reason why I'm so motivated mm. to push forward with this narrative that we have to own and license our stories that is the only way that we can control the narrative right mm -hmm. maybe it was because my show was about burlesque dancers, which is basically a stripper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we weren't just so direct. Mm -hmm. Maybe they wanted something that was a little, you know what I'm saying? No, I wouldn't have a kid on a mattress 
a little bit Tyler on a mattress while I'm opening a show with Down in the Valley where the girls get naked if you want to, you know, I wouldn't have done that. So mm -hmm. may, I don't know if it was a creative thing or what. Mm -hmm. There would have been a lot of nuances that would have been different. Mm -hmm. But the story, you know, representing the LBGTQ community, that owner that you've never seen before, mm -hmm. being able to relate to these women who have dreams and goals and aspirations beyond dancing and performing in the club. Mm -hmm. The antagonist of the mothers is in my show as well, mm -hmm. who didn't agree with the, you know, everything is pretty much the same, except um, they are hard, it, you know, it's, it's just a little more, uh, let me chill because I because I, what I don't want to do is I don't want people to feel like I have a problem with strippers yeah because I don't yeah I don't want people to feel like I'm judging you know their interpretation of what goes on in that space mm -hmm. because I'm not what I'm saying is that I think that there are ways for us to tell our real stories that don't require us to just have that same constant ongoing narrative of black women are strippers black men are drug dealers black rappers got to die at 20 like I'm over that well, the thing is, when you talk about mass media, you're talking about being edgy and putting out something that's not edgy. You see what I'm saying? Because like you say, it's nothing for us to get a story about a drug dealer. It's nothing for us to get a story about a stripper. But it is something for us to get a story about people that are working every day trying to make something happen for themselves. I ain't seen a story like Good Times since Good Times, okay? Just the average Happy black family trying to keep the party going. Uh, what were what were the responses to you when you reached out to them and said, "Hey, y'all, this kind of looks and resembles what I pitched to y'all years ago." Um. Well, you know, at that point, I didn't reach out to them because okay. I mean, you know, I'm like I already knew from the previous experience that I had. You got to have your lawyers reach out to them mm -hmm. in order for them to take you seriously. Yeah. At this point, I reached out to the lawyer who referred me. Yeah. And said, hey, you know, sir, yeah. you know, j just want you to know I've seen this thing. And I didn't even, my husband saw it and several people from the cast that had done Soul Kittens over the years was like, wait, did you? Because this is a lot like, it's mm. the, and I didn't even want to see it because yeah. I was concerned about looking like the girl who caused the issues at R&B Divas. We saw yeah. what happened there. I left and at the end of the day, the show went away eventually, yeah. right? I didn't want to look like a person who was coming in to take something away from fans who enjoyed something yeah. again. Yeah. I knew how bad we needed it in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to look that way. But I also didn't want to look in the mirror every day knowing that I was afraid yeah. to take these people to task and at least ask the question. I, I believe that they got the idea from me when I went in and pitched them. That mm -hmm. is what I believe. Okay. I believe that my story is substantially similar. I believe that those 47 similarities that are on, speaking of Worth Media, WIRFmedia.com, mm -hmm. I believe that most of the people who have gone and looked at that also believe that. That's right. At the end of the day, I know what's most important is what the judge says. Mm -hmm. I know what's most important is what the jury says. Mm -hmm. And I will always respect that process. I just hope that, you know, they understand, mm -hmm. meaning the defendants in this case understand mm -hmm. that if it were the reverse and it were me out here doing this, pitching a show, a I can't go nowhere. <laughs> Listen, I can't go nowhere right now mm -hmm. and say, hey, if I come to you right now, I'll be like, be high. OK, you're the head of a network. I got yeah. this show. OK, it's run by this, you know, gender fluid, transgender host. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he's like a damn mother to all the ladies. He really loves mm -hmm. them. And then, you know, they got the bouncer who takes care of him. And then, you know, mm -hmm. there's going to be this guy who's going to try to take the land for Vegas. You'd be like, well, we see that we that's P Valley. Uh. That's already there. So you, so I can't go and take someone else's creative ideas and claim them as my own mm. with adding a few nuances here and there to change it. So I feel like everybody in this situation should respect that if it is as close as it is, it deserves the opportunity to go before a judge and jury, which is all that matter. What their opinion is doesn't matter to me. Mm. And honestly, as passionate as I am about mine, I realize that it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. What matters is my evidence. That's and right. my evidence is strong. And 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 the, and the gag is, it's not just about the visual evidence. Mm. We have so much other evidence mm. that I can't talk about because we're going to court over yeah. this. Yeah. Just allow creatives to benefit from the things that they create. Create partnerships with creatives. Don't demand that we allow you to infringe on our intellectual properties without repercussion. 